Praise the Lord, Cross Creek Apostolic Church. Can we begin with just uplifting the name of Jesus this morning? Aren't you thankful that he's in your life? Aren't you thankful that is worthy? Hallelujah, Lord, we love you, Jesus. We're here to worship you, O oh God. You are the great I am. You are the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. You are the Almighty. You are the Ancient of Days, O oh God. You are the root and the offspring of David. Lord, we love you, God. Hallelujah. Come on, Cross Creek. Lift up the name of Jesus together. Magnify the Lord with me, all oh, ye people. Hallelujah. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you are worthy. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 No higher praise than that. Hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Yes, O oh Lord. You are good and you're worthy to be praised. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, O oh God. Hallelujah. Worship with us as we go to the Lord in song. Hallelujah.
begin to give your praise to Jesus this morning. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear your praise. He wants to hear your love this morning. Oh, what could stand against? What could stand against the power of God? What can keep us from the love of God? Neither height nor depth. Hallelujah. Neither sin. Hallelujah. Nothing. But nothing can separate us from his love. You're greater, God. You're stronger, Jesus. You're able, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Through you, God, I can walk upon the water, oh God. Through you, Jesus, I can command the mountain to be removed. Hallelujah. Oh, Oh, if we could just go deeper in him this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, to just tarry in his presence. To build those altars this morning. I lay myself down this morning, oh God. Not my will, but thine be done, oh God. You're greater, Jesus. You're stronger, God. You know it all, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You hold it in the palm of your hand, God. Hallelujah. 
Oh, we got to stand on faith this morning, church. That song, Our God is Greater, what could stand against us? Brother Daryl, neither sickness, nothing can stand against you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We want to pray for our pastor and, and uh, Sister Overton as they travel. They will be coming home tomorrow. Um, and we also want to pray for Brother Keel Rouse. He is traveling home today. Um, and we want to continue to pray for the Goins family, Brother Daryl and Sister Marie. They have an unspoken prayer request. Um, if you guys wouldn't mind coming to the altar, and Brother Ryan, if you could anoint them and, and pray a prayer of faith over them. Hallelujah. We also want to continue to remember those that are sick in body. We've had several in our church that have lost family members. Um, so just let's keep the body of Christ in, in prayer and continue to pray for our, our nation, to continue to pray for healing, to continue to pray for God's provision and protection upon this virus. Hallelujah. Let's go to God in prayer this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are the God that owns all the cattle on the hills this morning, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. We come unto you, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. We put our need into your hand, God. I pray, oh God, for Brother Daryl this morning, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. I rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus. I command healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. From the top of his head into the sole of his foot, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen their family, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Let them walk by faith, oh God, and not by sight, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. To speak, oh God, greater things over their life, I pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray, God, for our pastor and sister over to God. I pray, oh God, that your traveling mercies would be upon them, God. That you would bring them home safely, oh God. Bring Brother Hill home safely, God. Touch all those that are sick of body, oh God. Touch this world, God. Touch our nation, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Touch our leaders, oh God, I pray. Hallelujah, Lord. You're not the author of confusion, oh God. But you are in control, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus. We put you at the center of it all, oh God. We give you the glory, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you would show us your power and your demonstration and your might, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I pray, God, let this gospel be preached, oh God, to the whole world, oh God. Let souls be saved, oh God. Let them be filled with the Holy Ghost, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord, let them be endued with power, God. You've given us power, oh God. I pray, let faith arise this morning and let the enemy be scattered, oh God. Have your way in this place, God. Let there be liberty, Jesus, I pray. Liberty in every heart, oh God. Liberty in every soul, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor, Jesus. We praise your name, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We serve a mighty God this morning, don't we, church? He is able. He is able. If you guys, you guys may be seated, Sister Janelle will be coming with our announcements. Good morning, Cross Creek family. Praise the Lord. It's such a privilege to come to his house and worship together. I'm so glad for each and every one of you and also for those watching online. We are so glad to have you tuned into this service. Amen. God is doing a work at our church. Does anybody feel that? God is doing something right here at Cross Creek, and I'm happy to be a part of it. A couple of announcements for you um, as you prepare to give. We are having our prayer line. This is via Zoom. You can call in. Um, that's been a really powerful time with our church family. That happens at 8 p.m. on Tuesdays. But there's also additional prayer opportunities Monday through Saturday at 6 a.m. and also at 8 p.m. So join us for those special times to connect with the Lord and to hear what the Lord has to say to his church. Also, we have midweek Bible study. This is being offered um, virtually via our online services on the prayer book. I have the book personally, and it has been transformative. So I encourage everyone to tune into that time. I've really been blessed um, by the messages there. That's Thursdays at 7 p.m. The book is by Kevin Gurley. It's called The Book on Prayer. And then also we have our life groups. These have been going strong for a couple of weeks now. 
Um, if you are not connected and you would like to be connected, please call us at the church, reach out to somebody, and we'd love to get you involved in what's going on at Cross Creek. We have groups in Ellicott City, Odenton, Laurel, um, Bowie, and Silver Spring, as well as Crofton. So please come out, be a part of what God is doing, and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sister Janelle. Doesn't she do a wonderful job with the announcements? Very informative as always. Praise God. Brother Darrell, I just want to tell you, man, the, the blessings of the Lord is all over you. And I felt like the Lord just wanted me to tell you in the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 22, it says, the blessings of the Lord make it the rich, and he addeth no sorrow to it. So just hang on to your faith, brother. Hang on. God's going to see you through it. He brought you to it. He'll see you through it. Praise God. We're going to go to the Lord uh, in prayer for our offering. Just thank you so much. Pastor, again, wants me to just say how much y'all have, your faithfulness has just been a blessing. This is a beautiful building that y'all, you guys have kept up and running. Praise God, because God has blessed us tremendously. And I, I just want to pray over the offering before we, we march here. Uh, that way we keep our social distancing. But God bless each and every one of you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to give into your storehouse. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to give uh, beyond our means. Lord, you've been a blessing to us. And, Lord, we just pray that you continue to pour out your blessings on us, Lord, as we continue to strive to get closer with you, Lord. It's not by power nor might, but by your spirit, oh God, that we get closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
praise him. Just thank him for fighting your battles. When you thought there was no way, but he made a way for you. Just thank him. Just thank him right now. Let's allow the Lord to minister to us. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost is in this house. Now is the time. Reach out to the Lord, all you people. God is ministering right now. presence of the Lord is in this house today. Come on, now is not the time to get out of his presence. Let the Spirit do what the Spirit do and make intercession for us. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. God is ministering to you right now. All he wants us to do is surrender. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the God of this world and the God of your situation. No matter what lies the enemy's been telling you, God is still God. Come on. Reach out to him. Let him minister to you right now. It's not by accident. It is not by accident. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, musicians. This is not by accident right here. This is where the gifts of the Spirit begin to move in operation. It's when we linger in His presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, la la posata. It's where God still shows up in a heart, a dark world. But God's still God. Hallelujah.
Yes, God. Is there any battles need fighting today? Are there any battles that you need fought today? <clears throat> Praise God. Thank him again. Come on, lift up his name. You're only talking about the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the God of hosts. Such a beautiful presence, oh God. Yes, oh Lord. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, you are worthy, God. Oh, yes, he is worthy. If you know he's worthy right now, give a shout of triumph unto the Lord. Come on, let Satan and all his minions know who's in control. Thank you, praise him. Thank you. Don't you know how to fight your battles this morning? What a sweet, sweet presence of God in this house today. I don't feel like God's done. Can we just linger for just a second? If you have a need on your heart from God, I pray you just let it be known to him right now. Come on. That's right. The war. The world's trying to distract us, but God is trying to attract us. Oh, my. That's right, minister. Minister. Do you feel that, Cross Creek? Do you feel that? That's the glory of the Lord. Oh, yes. The Bible says that's just the earnest of our inheritance. It's just the earnest of our inheritance. I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither entered into the hearts of men the things that await on the Lord for those who love the Lord God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, God, for showing up today. Thank you, God. You're always here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, music team, musicians, praise team, for being obedient to the Spirit of God. Praise God. Praise God. It's times like this, no matter how dark the world may seem, no matter how divisive the world may get, God still holds the power. God can still bring it all together. Praise God. And you know what? He will. He is, he honors his word. Praise God. 
Praise God. I do uh, want to ask y'all to pray before we get started into a, a, a message. It, it just came to my attention that Brother Hillard is in the hospital. He is a dear friend of mine since he has befriended me since I came here. My wife and family came here. I know you. a lot of you have known him a lot longer than I have, but he means a great deal to me. And I know he means a great deal to y'all. So whatever the issue is, I just pray. Let's just lift up his name in prayer right now. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would touch Brother Hillard in his body, no matter what the situation is, God. Lord, I pray you would bring comfort right now. I pray, Lord, that you would just touch the doctors, anoint the doctors, God. Lord, if this be your will, use it as a tool for him to minister to somebody. But Lord, I pray overall that you would heal him right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's all power is given unto you, O Lord, in heaven and in earth. In that name. In that name. Oh, what a beautiful name. By the authority of your spirit, I speak healing right now. In his body. Heal him in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're already doing. Thank you for what you're already gunning to do. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's healing in the house today. There's anointing in this house today. And in the name of Jesus, let there be answers in the house today. If I could, please just get a little bit more monitor up here. I'm sorry. If you have your Bibles handy, I won't hesitate any longer. The Lord's been dealing with me for some time about a few portions of Scripture, and I've really not had any idea what God was trying to do or tell me. And I still really don't. I hope y'all forgive me for that. But I really believe that. But when I got up this morning and was in prayer, God said, just go read it and I'll carry you the rest of the way. And I've jotted down a few notes and hopefully uh, we get to where we're going. So the, run the runway might seem long this morning, but we will take off and we will land. Praise God. If you have your Bibles handy, please turn your pages to the book of Habakkuk, a minor prophet in the Old Testament. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And it reads this way. I will stand upon my watch and set up me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write this vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, and it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. If you also, while you're in Habakkuk, if you'll turn over to chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Verse 17 says, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of olives shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon high, mine high places to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. If you would... Turn over to Zephaniah chapter 3. Again, please forgive me. <laughs> this is what I feel the Spirit speaking. Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 13 through 20 reads this way. And the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all thy heart. O daughter of Jerusalem, the Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He has cast out thine enemy. The king of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, 
and to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee and is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love and he will joy over thee with singing. And I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that, that was driven out. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. And at that time, I will bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. Thank you for your patience in reading those. But I'd like to speak to you for just a few moments this morning. Of the power of the prophet's prayer song. The power of the prophet's prayer song. Praise God. We're all familiar with prophets in the Bible. There's Isaiah. There's Ezekiel. Elisha. We all know the big known ones. But sometimes we forget about the minor prophets. And the minor prophets really give us some, some good stuff. And I'm just going to preach today from that title. The power of the prophet's prayer song. And I pray that the Lord lets it go into where he pleases it and not of my own accord let's pray lord jesus we love you we give you all glory we give you all honor lord we pray that you would anoint our minds and our hearts today to receive this word that you speaketh lord help us decrease so you can increase O lord let us be willing vessels to receive your word and go out into this dark world and be the ray of light that you have called us to be because it will be the church that mends the broken in this hour. And Lord, we know that you got need of all of us in this house today. Whether we be black, whether we be white, whether we be Hispanic, you created us all in your image, oh God. And Lord, I pray that you would anoint us all to have a mind like you, Jesus. That we would walk in the ways of the Spirit. And Lord, Lord, have your will in this house today. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Praise the mighty God of Israel, the mighty God of this world, the mighty God of every universe. Don't you know that he's worthy today? Praise God. The power of the prophet's prayer song. It seems as every day we are overwhelmed with stories of national tragedy or some type of disaster. We are hearing about wars and rumors of wars as the Bible correctly confirms the current famines and economic collapses that have been taking place. There are political revolutions that are popping up out of thin air all over the world. Some have good intentions and some have bad. There is a constant stream of social injustice on every sideline of ethnicity, some being greater than others. And to be honest, we live in a complex and hopelessly chaotic world. We are seeing creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together. And it is very easy for us under the barrage of bad news to lose our confidence that there is an overall master plan guiding some of these world events. This world has become so sin sick and twisted. And at times I imagine even some of us ha have said, God, how can you possibly achieve anything good out of this current mess? But you must understand that this is not something new. We are not the only ones who've had to deal with difficult times while serving God. The prophets Habakkuk and Zephaniah wrestled with the challenge of trusting God in a similar world to what we see today, which is a world that you can say has completely gone wrong. But it was their faith in God's character. It was their faith in God's wisdom. It was their faith in God's power that encouraged him to believe and stay the course. God alone is still in charge today, Cross Creek. Regardless of what you may think, regardless of what you might be struggling with, God still does all things well. It does not matter if you are in the wilderness. It does not matter if you are in captivity. It does not matter where you, at, where you are at in your walk with God, but you got to understand that God does all things well. Hallelujah. We see that both Zephaniah and Habakkuk prophesied just prior to Babylon's meteoric rise in Mesopotamia and their conquest of the king of Judah. Zephaniah being a voice to the people of the soon-to-be destruction that would come to Jerusalem and Solomon's temple. And Habakkuk would take somewhat of a different approach as he would voice his concerns to God. 
Habakkuk's ministry would come after Zephaniah, and though they were different, they were still yet so similar. So I will use Habakkuk first and explain why at the end, and I pray, I pray, O oh Lord, that you make it very plain for us this morning. The prophet Habakkuk lived during the final decades of Israel's southern kingdom, and it was a time of injustice and idolatry. That don't sound too familiar to you today, does it? I mean, unless we've been under a rock, we see what's happening in this world. He saw that the rising threat of Babylon on the horizon was coming, and you must understand that this was not good news for anybody in that day. But unlike the other prophets, Habakkuk does not accuse Israel. He does not even speak on God's behalf to the people. Rather, all of his words are addressed personally to God himself. His writings tell us about his personal struggles and his journey of trying to believe that God is good when there is so much evil and tragedy in the world. But you got to understand that Habakkuk still understood that even though there was so much evil in this world and he was unsure of some things, he was confident that praise and song was essential to get the attention of God. Habakkuk, we see in Scripture, was the temple musician during the reign of King Jehoiakim's wicked and evil rule. And Habakkuk knew that in order to get the attention of God, that he had to let a praise out. That he had to dance before the Lord and praise him with the loud sounding cymbals and the stringed instruments. That the prayer songs of the remnant of God's people would serve as a sweet, savory incense before the Lord. Just let me tell you, while there is plenty carnal divide in this country, the church must remain the church. Because it is the church of God that will conquer this divide. Praise God. Habakkuk's prayer songs are actually poems of lament. Very similar to the laments that you find in the book of Psalms. These are complaints that draw God's attention to the suffering and the injustice in the world and demands God to do something about it. And if you can understand about this lament form, it is actually the key to understanding the design and message of Habakkuk's prayer song. In chapters 1 and 2, we see this back and forth argument between Habakkuk and God. And the prophet lodges two complaints, which God offers two responses. Aren't you thankful that you serve a God of response this morning? Aren't you blessed that you know that you serve a God who will answer you no matter what the trial is? Praise God. It doesn't fall on deaf ears this morning. God will answer his people. Habakkuk's first complaint is that life in Israel become, has become absolutely horrible. The Torah, meaning the word of God, has gone neglected, resulting in violence and injustice. And it's all being tolerated by Israel's corrupt leaders. And Habakkuk is crying out to God, asking him to do something about it. But though something, nothing seems to change. But then all of a sudden we see that God responds. He says that I, he's very much aware of the corruption of his own people in Israel. And that he's summoning the armies of Babylon to bring down his justice on Israel. And very similar to the message of Micah in Isaiah, God says he will use this terrifying empire to devour Israel because of their injustice and evil. But Habakkuk has a problem with that answer. So he offers his second complaint. And he says, God, Babylon is even worse than Israel. What are you thinking, Lord? We need your help. We do not need more destruction in this land. They are more corrupt. They are more violent. They have deified their own military power. They treat humans like animals, gathering them up like fish in a net. They did not devour the nations where they are at, and they enslaved the people in order to build their own empire. And so Habakkuk says, God, how can you do this? You, being a holy, good God, why would you let this fall on your people? Why would you use such corrupt nations as your instrument in history? So he demands an explanation. In fact, he depicts himself as a watchman on the city walls waiting for God's response. And of course, God is a God of response. And the response comes. God tells Habakkuk, he says, I want you to get out some stone tablets similar to what Moses had in the Ten Commandments. And he says, I want you to chisel and record what you see and what you hear. And God gives Habakkuk a vision about an appointed time in the future. That even though it might seem slow in coming but it will still eventually come. In fact, God says that the righteous people that belong to him, the church, will live by their faith in this hope and vision. So what is this divine promise that Habakkuk is supposed to write down? 
It's that God will bring Babylon down. In fact, God says, yet though I raised them up to be punishment for the people's disobedience, I too will not allow their immoral practices to go unjudged because he is still a God of justice. God says that the violence and the oppression of the nations creates this never-ending cycle of revenge and that God will use this cycle to bring about the rise and the fall of nations. And the fact that God for a time might use a corrupt nation or, or, or people like Babylon. It does not mean that he endorses this type of behavior. God holds all nations accountable to injustice, just like he does an individual. We will all have to answer for every idle word and every idle thought. We will all stand before God and account for the evil things that we do. That is why it is so important that we get our sins under the blood today and stop wasting time, because if you do not, you will fail. And just like Babylon failed, we also, too, will fail. We have to be careful and keep our mind fixed on God. So we see this overlying example in the book of Habakkuk, where God promises are now elabor elaborated by a series of five woes that describes the kind of oppression and injustice that is perpetrated in nations like Babylon. The first two target unjust economic practices. For the example, wealthy people are, are charging ridiculous interest to poor people so they can keep them in debt. And so they build their wealth through the crooked means. The, uh, the third, uh, excuse me, the, the first two, excuse me, was that. The third woe is a critic of slave labor where they treat humans like animals, threatening them with violence and they do not, if they do not produce what is commanded by Babylon. And then the fourth woe is about the abuse of alcohol and drugs by irresponsible leaders. While people are suffering under their bad leadership, they are out engaging in immoral acts, wasting away money and part on partying. And the last woe exposes idolatry because idolatry is the engine that drives all nations against God. And because of that, people are trapped in bondage by their own national empire. These practices are described here they're not unique to just Babylon, but that's part of the point. And that's why I'm preaching this today, because God, I feel, has given me a message for the church. Praise God. Because given the human conditions today, most nations that fall into sin and disregard the truth of God's word will eventually become Babylon. And so this is how God's answer to Habakkuk becomes God's answer to all generations, to anybody who lives in a world ruled by other Babylons. But that leaves the question hanging in the balance. Is God going to let the cycle of the rise and fall of Babylon-like empires go on forever? And that is the question what Habakkuk answers in chapter 3. When you read this, it's easy to see that this is a prayer by Habakkuk. But what I like to consider it is a prayer song, being that he was the chief musician of the, of the temple. And it begins with Habakkuk pleading with God to act now in the present, just how he has in the past, to bring down these corrupt nations. Excuse me. And what follows is a very ancient poem. The first describes the powerful, terrifying appearance of God. It is very similar to the opening poems of Micah and Nahum and similar to the appearance of God at Mount Sinai in the book of Exodus where he is likened to a cloud and a fire and an earthquake because God always shows up in a big way. The elements of this world obeys when God speaks. When the Creator shows up to confront human evil, everybody will have to pay attention. God is not mocked. Let us not be confused tonight. Hallelujah. Then Habakkuk goes on to describe this future defeat of evil as a future exodus. So just like God came and split the Red Sea for Moses in his battle against Pharaoh, Habakkuk says once more God will bring his judgment down on the head of evil as we know it. So Pharaoh, like we read in Exodus, in Babylon has become an archetype of the violent human nations. But at the same time, we are told that when God confronts evil, he will save his people and his anointed. Oh, hallelujah. Because God always offers a way out to humanity. So do not lose focus on the distraction of this evil world today because there is a quickening that is going to take place. Or in other words, there is a rapture. And this prayer song, this, this past exodus has become the image of a future exodus that God will perform. He once again will bring evil to its knees. He will make every Pharaoh in Babylon of this world confess that he was he is lord he will bring justice with his righteousness and rescue the oppressed and the innocents and it is this hope 
that enables Habakkuk to conclude his prayer song with hopeful praise. No matter what lies the enemy is feeding this world right now, no matter the mouths of, of mouths of injustice, no matter what diseases are of this world, I'm going to trust in the Lord with the joy that I have in my heart because I've been given a covenant promise and I'm going to take these filthy rags of righteousness and continue to live by faith. I just have to know that God knows how dark this world is. And regardless how dark and immoral it is, Jesus is coming back for a bride that is without spot and without blemish. And I got to make sure that I'm ready. You got to make sure that you're ready. Stop being distracted by the fearful things of this carnal world. Stop living in uncertainty. And please get your eyes on Jesus. Because it is Jesus that will rescue the brokenhearted. It is Jesus that will bring forth his judgment. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. It doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. But along with his judgment comes his peace. Oh, praise God. I love the book of Habakkuk. But you must understand he almost got lost in his uncertainty. Because just 12 years prior... Zephaniah, who ministered for 19 years, being God's voice during the final decades of the kingdom of Judah, watched as King Josiah attempted to bring about real change to the land. He even removed the idols, and he did so in hopes that he would restore the temple of worship to Israel's God. But Israel was just too far gone. The worshiping of other gods was so entrenched in the life of the people and it ended up that King Josiah's pride led him to a tragic death on the battlefield as he set Jerusalem on a collision course with Babylon. Zephaniah had seen all this coming and for years had been warning the leaders of Jerusalem. Just let me say, be careful what you let into your household today. Be careful what you feed your spirit. Be careful what you allow your children to dabble in because it will trap you. And before you know it, you will be far removed from God. And that is exactly how the devil pulls the wool over our eyes today. Zephaniah sings a a collection of prayer songs that summarize his message. And when you start to dissect Zephaniah's book, it's designed to have three major parts. The first focuses on the day of the Lord's judgment coming to Judah in Jerusalem. The second part is about the day of the Lord's judgment on the nations and then Jerusalem again. And then the third explores the hope that remains for any nation and for, any, uh, and for Jerusalem and anybody on the other side of God's judgment. The first section opens up with this shocking reversal of Genesis chapter 1. So God's ordered world is going to descend back into disorder and darkness and, and chaos uh, becoming unhabitable once again. And as you keep reading, you realize Zephaniah, Zephaniah is developing all these powerful poetic images to describe how Jerusalem is going to end. All of the city's institutions for worshiping the gods of the, the Canaanites will be destroyed. All the leaders who perpetrated injustice and all the ep- economic centers that allowed the, the crooked lending and borrowing to take place will all be gone along with the city walls. Zephaniah develops these almost apocalyptic images to show the significance of what's going to happen. It all refers to a great army that is coming to take out Jerusalem. Now it is interesting Uh, that Zephaniah never mentions whose army God is going to use to bring down this judgment. But we know from reading Micah and Habakkuk that it is, in fact, Babylon. But Zephaniah never mentions that, and that's because he wants to highlight God's role in orchestrating the rise and the fall of the city. And actually, that's what gives Zephaniah his hope in all of this darkness that he saw in the world. So he calls on anyone in Jerusalem who would seek the face of God. And he says that all who worship God will make up that faithful remnant of the people that could be spared if they repent of their sins. Zephaniah then widens his focus to include the nations around Judah, like the Philistines and the Moabites and the Ammonites and the Assyrians. And he accuses all of them of corruption and violence and arrogance. And he predicts all of them will fall before Babylon too. And what is shocking is that this final people group targeted in this section are the Israelites that are in Jerusalem. So let's not be naive today. Because even though it's true that the world will have to deal with God's judgment, the Israelites were God's people. And they are symbolic to the church today. And if we as the church are arrogant and divisive, we too will have to answer to God's judgment. We have to be careful and humble today and be what God's called us to be. Because it was the leaders 
It was the prophets, it was the priest of Israel that became so corrupt and violent and so estranged from God that he didn't even recognize them as his people anymore. And so God cast forth this judgment and he says he's going to gather up all the nations, including Jerusalem, and he's going to pour out his burning indignation. Hallelujah. We got to be careful and make sure we stay recognizable to our God today. God's justice becomes this consuming fire that we see that devours evil from the land. And so for the following part of this prayer song, Zephaniah speaks of one more promise from God. But it comes as a total surprise. We discover that this burning fire of divine judgment is not aimed at destroying people. Rather, its purpose is to purify the nations, including Jerusalem. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9. For then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. God says, hey, I'm going to help you out in your time of trouble. One day I'm going to pour out of my spirit and I'm going to give you my name. See, you have to understand that back then in the Old Testament, God had many names. He was known as Jehovah Jireh, Yahweh, Jehovah Nisi, the El Shaddai. But God said that after I purify you, the people are going to turn from evil and call upon that one name. And if you are a student of scripture, these are images that point to the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham all the way back in Genesis. This is chapter 12 where God would find a way to bless the nations. Hallelujah. He is referring to a type of judgment that will change the mind of people to cause them to repent and seek God's forgiveness. And there are many things in this world today that we can liken to this type of judgment. Things like the coronavirus, the racial divide that has grown rampant in this country. But I'm here to tell you today that God should not be our last resort in the middle of all this. He should be our first response. Don't you allow Satan to divide the church or divide the unity in the body today. Because there is a purpose behind all of the madness and it's the enemy trying to divide the church. God has given us a promise. If we can sing and worship and rejoice together, the Bible gives us a striking image where we see God involved in the actual prayer song to that where God wants to sing and rejoice with us as well. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 it says the Lord thy God is in the midst of thee and is mighty he will save and he will rejoice over thee with joy he will rest in his love and he will joy over thee with singing the closing of Zephaniah's prayer song closes with these powerful images about God gathering up into his family the outcasts and the brokenhearted and the poor where he exalts them into a place of honor meaning all ethnicities praise God Zephaniah depicts some of the most intense images of God's justice and love that you can find anywhere throughout the book of the prophets. God's justice is about his passion to protect and rescue his creation from the horror and ungodly evil and violence. God will not tolerate the horrible things that humanity is doing together in this hour, but he brings his justice in order to restore in or to create clean hearts in hopes that it might generate a sincere act of repentance in this human hatred. It's not God's will that any should perish. We have to understand that there are two aspects of God's character, and that is his justice and his love. And he wants us to discover that together, this dictates where we will spend eternity. It is his judgment of justice that enlightens us to recognize that if we do not seek God and turn from our wickedness, that we will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. It is now not the time to step back with God. If there's anything in this carnal world that is occupying your time and pulling you away from your relationship with God, then you need to lay it down at this altar today. And you need to get your eyes fixed on Jesus because we need to be in the will of God. We need to be seeking his presence. We need to be at the trysting place. You can say like we talked about Thursday night and this is the reason that I told the story of the prophet's prayer song in a reversed order to show you that God has always offered humanity the chance to reconcile with him before his judgment there is idolatry in this world that is changing the hearts and minds of humanity just like in the times of Habakkuk and Zephaniah It is time that we understand where we are in this season. The Apostle Paul told Timothy, we are living in the latter times. There are millions of distractions trying to pull us away from the blessed eternal promise of God. I truly believe we are the generation of the trumpet sounding. 
Don't get me wrong. I understand that no man knoweth the day and no man knoweth the hour. But I am not naive to hear what the Spirit is saying. And I can know the season, though. Jesus said, take heed, Matthew 24, verse 4, that no man deceive you. That is because deception will be a part of the atmosphere in the end times. Just like Pastor preached a couple weeks ago, there are many voices speaking in the world, but we got to make sure that we're only listening to God's voice. Hallelujah. This is such a scary situation. The reason that is is because the Bible says that even the very elect will be deceived. Oh, Lord, help us. Do we not be ignorant to the devil's devices? If there's one thing that I could take away from this coronavirus pandemic is that uh, it did humanity a favor. You say, well, Brother Matthew, slow now. What do you mean? Well, it did me a favor in terms of getting closer to God. Distractions were taken away, such as sporting events and movie theaters. The church doors were forced to be closed. And it made you get personal and have a more strong relationship with God and find that place of intimacy so then what does the devil do he can't have that he can't have you getting closer to God that goes against what he's trying to accomplish so now he resorts to put ethnicities against each other oh lord yes racism is an ongoing issue and it has been for hundreds of years and there's nothing right about racism let's just call it what it is it's sin You can't say you love God and hate me, and I can't say I love God and hate you. We had a gathering at my house a few weeks ago. The hyphen group came over, Sister Janelle, Sister Alyssa. They were actually the day that they went down to D.C. and prayed for the people at the White House. And Sister Shay got to my house a little early, and me and my wife and Shay were were sitting down, and we were listening to Brother Joel Urshan preach, who's probably one of my favorite preachers. And he said something, and I thought it was just so good, and I want to share it with you this morning. He said, I don't believe in the word race as the world uses the term race. I don't believe in race as the world defines the term race, because there is no such thing as race as the world uses it. The Bible does not use the word race in terms of skin color. The Bible only uses the word race in the context of running a race like a marathon. The Bible says, let us run this race that is set before us. That is the only time that the word race is used in the Bible. In terms of compartmentalizing people, there are no races of people in the Bible. The Bible likens us as nations or as people. There are kingdoms and there are tongues, but there are no races of people. The word race is a Darwinian term. It is an evolutionary term. It was meant to divide people into groups and put them in competition against each other. So hence the word race. In America today, perhaps we are inching close to the greatest divide ever in the nation's history but in the name of Jesus there is healing that's going to come and it's going to come by way of the church of the living God oh hallelujah we are not divided listen we don't even have different skin colors y'all say brother Matthew you hit your head this morning no but listen we don't even have different skin colors if you look at uh, skin colors they are earth tones from the lightest of the skin to the darkest they're earth tone I am what you would call a white person. <laughs> Duh. No. But if I was to go into Sherwin Williams and say, hey, give me this color paint. And I went and I painted that crap on my wall. I need to take that junk back because it's not white. It's not white. Do you see what the devil does? He tries to compartmentalize us and put us in and reduce us to color. We are not different colors. We are earth tones. The Bible says that God formed man by the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The Bible calls our bodies an earthen vessel. The Bible says that we are of the earth earthly, so we are earth toned. The devil tries to wedge his way in and capture our way of thinking by pitting us against each other. Oh, be vigilant, child of God. Be vigilant and be strong and know that you have an adversary this morning that wants to do anything that he can do to divide the body of Christ and separate you from the love of God and strip you from your inheritance of eternal life with Jesus. I am am in no way a prophet this morning, but I pray you hear my prayer song this morning. Please do not focus on the things of this world. Oh, Lord Jesus, I love each and every one of you this morning whether you're black or whether you're white or whether you're whatever. And I pray that I can be some type of bridge to fill in a gap in this world of divide. 
But I please pray that you keep your eyes on Jesus. Musicians, if you will, come. Every time this world has funneled itself into a seething pot of sin, God has always sent a prophet to be a voice. Whether it was Isaiah, whether it was Samuel or John the Baptist, a major or minor prophet, God has always used the man of God to sing the song of judgment. And once again, God is doing it. And there have been many times where the people would not hearken to the voice of the prophets. Even though it was a voice that was ordained of God, it did not matter to them. It eventually went through one ear and out the other. And because of this blatant disregard, judgment was cast and the people were consumed with destruction. Oh, Cross Creek family, because you're my family, hear me today. God is speaking once again, using the voice of a preacher, using the voice of pastor, using the voice of evangelist. Using the voice of your Sunday school teachers. That's right. The Sister Allen's, the Sister Andreas, the hyphen leaders, Sister Janelle. God is using us. And he's asking us to sing that sweet song of repentance today. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The day of salvation is today. I know this world is so messed up right now. But in the name of Jesus, it's going to be you. It's going to be you. It's going to be you that's going to bring a bridge to the divide. And what the devil meant for evil, God's going to turn it into good. Please stand with me. Every hand raised, every eyes closed. We're going to come against the spirit of hell right now. We're coming against the racial divide in this country. We're going to, we're going to build fortresses against the enemy today. If you would, just begin to lift your voice to the name of Jesus. And speak against that demonic, demonic spirit called racism. Speak against that demonic, demonic spirit of divide. And pray, Lord, give power to the church. Give power to the church. Lord, we want to be used of you. We want to be used of you, almighty God. Lord, if you can use anybody, use us. If you can use anybody, use the body, oh God. Lord, help us. If you're comfortable, you can come to this altar. But I just pray right now. That you let every care in the world go and you find the heart of God tonight or this morning. You find the mind of God and say, God, whatever it is you want from me, whatever it is you need of me, oh Lord, help me. God, I pray for your forgiveness. If there's anything that I thought in my mind that would be a hindrance to the kingdom, God, forgive me. I don't want to have issue with a brother. I don't want to have issue with a sister. Lord, I love your children. You created us all in your image equal. We are of the earth, earthly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church.